So he rung my bell Wednesday night or Thursday morning, like four o'clock. Who it is? You know what I'm saying? Run, run him upstairs. Yeah, hey, why you ring my bell so late? You know what I'm saying? Now, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? I just want something. I just want something. He pulled out the 357. After that, he shot me in the head. The bullet came out. My right eye hit the wall. My whole body was numb. All I can do is fall. You know what I'm saying? Well, I told him I love him. I told God I'm coming to see him. Because I thought he killed me. So I told my baby mom to take my daughter home. So I got in my car, somebody opened my doors, they shot me in my traps, my chest, still full of bullet right here, in my ribs, and two more times in my head. I crashed my car to the pole in front of the supermarket and my doors locked automatically. My man, he tried to bake my windows with a garbage can. Somebody told me the cops passed me, the undercover cops, they see me and they just keep driving. I said, wow, Tasha called Tito. He told my uncle, he told Tasha, don't pull a plug. Wait the next year, just wait the next year. I was really hurt. I didn't want him to die. He's a good brother, he's been with everybody, you know what I'm saying? So I was really hurt by this happening to him. So I was there for him from day one. He took my watch for 3000 took my chain for 21000 you know what I'm saying? But I'm still here. I weighed 100 pounds. I couldn't walk. I couldn't talk. And I was blind. Listen to me. I'm not dead. I'm going to make it the right way. I'm going to make it the right way. I'm trying to talk to, to the youth, man. I'm trying to talk to anybody, you know what I'm saying? But really to the youth. Now, way back in the days, I was really blind. You know what I'm saying? Now, I can see. Please listen to this documentary. This documentary for three young ladies. Number one is my mom's. Number two is my little daughter named Azare. And the third one, Daytona. Now, a lot of people like me. They don't really know me, but they like me. Every time they see me, it's like, wow, it's all these people saying, he all right, he all right. You all right? Good. Chill him, chill him. Don't no cars no more. Huh? Don't no fast cars no more. Nah, nah, nah. You know, Artie was the Superman, you know, the, the, the guy that, you know, with the muscles that would lift the car and take it across, punch it across the street. Knock out Artie, B. Knock out Artie. Bottom line here, big ass hands, long arms, you know what I'm saying, B. Then was silver back, knock out Artie. He had so many names, it was crazy because he was with his hands. And it didn't matter who you was or what you was doing, got in line, you would know about it. So from that point on, they would knock out Artie. That's what it was, Artie Bulldog, Artie Silverback. You know what I'm saying, that, that, that's who he is. I'm saying, please, you know what I'm saying, so next time you see me on the streets, call me Swoles. You know what I'm saying? Please call me Swoles. No silverback, no Audi Bulldog. Call me Swoles. You know what I'm saying? Swoles mean strength, wisdom, outstanding, and love. You know what I'm saying? Strength, 
wisdom, outstanding in love, swoles. Please, I change, and I hope you'll change with me. Well, I was born on the east side, like 100th Street between Park and Lexington, building 101. And um, my mom's left my father real fast. Like, oh, man, I was like, like two, yeah, something like that. The one or two or three. And we, after that, we moved to the west side. 111th Street, 112th Street, and St. Nicholas Avenue on the downtown side. The building 15. Now my mom's left my father, right? And she had me. After that, she had my little brother. And my mom's staying with my little brother father. Okay. I'm saying, and she had two boys. And after that, she broke up with my little brother father. And after that, she was by herself. I found out, right? I like um, animals. I'm saying, I just like animals. And, well, I was real young, I like animals. And, you know, I went to school to be a veterinarian. But, I'll never forget, I was 11 years old. And I was watching TV, building like a, a building 15, like 111, 112, St. Nicholas. And the bodybuilder show came on. And I was like, wow. After that, I went to the gym. I realized, right, when I was growing up, you know what I'm saying, you know, I had a lot of things, right? But each year went by, I ain't have nothing. I, I ain't have nothing at all. When I tell you, when I was growing up, Christmas, I had everything, all the gifts. The first year back to school, I had all the outfits, the, Easter, on my birthday, I had everything. But each year went by, and I go upstairs, number one, I can't take a shower, you know what I'm saying? Because the ceiling is falling in the tub. It, it's like, um, or number two, I try to take a number two in the bathroom, and my mom had to throw out the backyard window. I'm saying it's just like after that the lights turned off. Um, I see a mouse in the house. Next week I see a rat in the house. I said, please go downstairs and get a cat and bring the cat upstairs. I'm saying I was like I was shocked. Like Fritz did, wrist big. This kid was heavy with metal like Limp Bizkit. I love Fritz because Fritz take care of a lot of people. You know what I'm saying? And um, he did the right thing. You know, he did the wrong thing, but the right thing at the same time. And um, see, when my mom met him, see, I was real young. And I realized my mom don't tell me a lot of things. See what I'm saying? So I had to find out off the streets or, hey, you know what I'm saying? So I, I, I realized I don't know, I'm not going to know. Saying. But Fritz was doing his thing and my mom was doing her thing. Fred Durst, the biscuits at your head first. Uh -huh. Got head first on the GB, was dead thirst. Uh -huh. I held work for Rail Mac, my next route. Kirk Love CB, Dame Crew was the best out. Juan did the BMs, no number left out. We the M series, no top, chest out. A hunt tenth, the 55th. Paladino, the Riverside. Yes. Valentino for niggas' eyes by the whole team kicks game day. What's the nigga size? I got y'all. See them lost who they born for. Cab Childs had the BM parked in the ball store. They know. Don Divas, Palm Heaters was called for. White and PV, that's preacher. You better walk off. Uh, from Nordica to a rugby top. Breakfast at Pan Pan, dirty kitchen, the Dougie spot. Yes. From rooftop to club body, the bottles pop. Soon as I left the back door, I heard Lottie shot. Damn. NFL, the same game. Peace, deep third. 40 walls, the names ring. Yeah. I'm in the hood like bang bang Would've got robbed from lynch mob Your chain swing Real. Enough of that uptown We love the rap So I went to Park West On like on 50th street Between 10th and 9th Avenue And um I'll never forget I got locked up Now why I got locked up Because It's just like I did the wrong thing I was hustling <laughs> My name is Tito Smith. 
Tico Pong, Tito, Stutter. That's what it is. I met Artie, I think it was like um, 89. I was downtown 112th in Lenox. It's in Nicholas over there. I said, the funny thing about it, I was in Comstock. I think it was like 93. I said, damn, homie look familiar, B. And I went over there and I saw him. I said, oh shit, Tito, what up, B? And from there, at that point, we became cool. Well, from Comstock, I think it was a year at first, right? Then I left and went to um, Bear Hill. And then he came to Bear Hill. And from there, from like, at least like three or four years together in Bear Hill. And from there, he was known for working out, having a crazy old body, doing mad pull-ups. I mean, crazy pull-ups, more than anybody in the whole jail. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? He was killing them, you know what I'm saying? And places from Harlem, everybody knew he was from. I was from Harlem, they all knew who I was. You know what I'm saying? From there, we just connect even more because it was an uptown thing in Bear, uptown, Brooklyn, Queens, wherever it was. You know what I'm saying, B? So from that point, we was known as the uptowners, B, up in the joint. You know what I'm saying? He got a line, we gonna lay him out. His name was Arthur. Everybody in the hood call me Black. Where you from, Black? From the hill, Skrilla Hill. On 29th, Terrace, Convent. They just know me as Black. Um, my brother Tito introduced me to Artie. Um, one time, things wasn't right in the street. There was a funny taste out here on that. So I said, nah, you gotta change this shit. You know what I mean? It's, it's crazy. I need to speak to A, you know what I mean? So at the time I met up with A, he pulls up in a, um, a 350Z silver, and we was over there on uh, Bradhurst, um, Bradhurst chopping it up, you know? That's the first time I met A. He don't know me, I don't know him, you know what I'm saying? But each day I go to the barbershop, I see him. Now the barbershop is 113th or 112th on Lenox Avenue, on the downtown side, you know what I'm saying? And um, like right now it's a tattoo place that, you know what I'm saying? But, Way back in the days, it was a barber shop, and and I go into the barber shop. I speak to him, "How you doing? Okay." And he see me like like three times, and the last time he spoke to me, he saying, "What up? What are you saying? What you doing?" You know I'm saying, "I'm alright." Why you ask me that question? You know what I'm saying, after that, hey, he put me on. He put me on. A barber or someone that's that? No, somebody. Shop? somebody at the barbershop because he was getting his hair cut. So he just approached you and asked you? Right, because he asked me, like, you know... What you presented before? Right, like, you know, he, he don't know me, I don't know him, you know what I'm saying? But he see me in the barbershop, right? And he said, yo, you all right? I said, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Boom, he broke out. You know what I'm saying? The another week he got his hair cut at the same thing. You all right? Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? He broke out. And another day, he said the same thing. I said, yo, why you ask me that? You know what I'm saying? Nah, you know what I'm saying? After that, okay, ba da da, boom. After that, he gave me his number, and bang. Right, you know what I'm saying? Now, before I, I, before I was selling dust, I bought an Acura off the streets. You know what I'm saying? And um, like 5,000. You know what I'm saying? It was all white, so I got it all in painted all right again, and I got rims, and I got a system, tinted windows, whatever, you know. But after that, I went to, to the dealership, and I bought a silver Corvette. Right after that, I bought a great Corvette. After that, I bought a Z, a Tasha, you know what I'm saying? After that, I bought a blue Corvette. But I made that Corvette faster, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and I changed the carpet to blue. And after that, I bought, now I don't know how to drive stick shifts, so somebody working inside the dealership, he, he showed me how to drive stick shift real easy, you know what I'm saying? So I, I bought a red Viper. And he, um, Route 4 on New Jersey, the Dodge dealership. He opened up the, the big doors on the showroom floor. He, wrote the, he drove the Red Viper out the, out the showroom floor. He told me to get inside. After that, he drove to the empty parking lot in New Jersey. After that, he, you know, he switched seats with me. He said, yo, just drive on, drive, you know what I'm saying? And I drive, it's like, wow. And 
he said, yo, take me back to the dealership. Only thing I couldn't do is get up the hill. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, I learned that though. So, I took him back to the dealership. I went home. Two more days on a Saturday. I woke Tasha up. I went back to New Jersey. Yo, give me that Viper. You know what I'm saying? And I crashed it in two days. After that, I went back to New Jersey and bought a, a black one. And now I only had 200 of made. Mambo, you know what I'm saying? So I had number 86, and inside was red and black. You know what I'm saying? And after that, um, I bought, now, before, I bought another Viper, right? I, I was in my house, and my phone rang. I took it, uh, the house phone. I said, oh, New Jersey, the dealership is calling me. What up, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? She said, how you doing? And she, like, 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 not about my cars. Like, she was for me. I said, oh, wow, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? And I went to see her. You know what I'm saying? And um, she was Jamaican also, right? I said, wow, how you doing, man? And um, oh, she gave me her number. I gave her my number. You know what I'm saying? So I'll never forget, I was going to a house out in New Jersey. And I never did a ship, a silver viper. I said, wow. So I went to see her. So after that, I was going back home. I stopped my car. I jumped over the walls. You know what I'm saying? I looked at that, that silver viper. You know what I'm saying? So the same night, late at night, I went to get my man. So he went back to the, the dealership with me late at night, right? I said, yo, look at the silver paper. You know what I'm saying? He was looking at other cars also. The next day, I bought that silver viper. You know what I'm saying? After that, um, the last viper, all white with a blue lining, only had it 100 in May. You know what I'm saying? Because I realized I was going to get the last viper, right? New Jersey on Route 4. And I ain't get it. And I'm going to tell you why I ain't get it, right? Now, that was a hard top. The last Viper was hard top, right? The, how you say, the back was different and the rims was different. But the only reason I ain't buy that last Viper, that Viper was yellow. You know what I'm saying? I said, nah. So somebody working inside the dealership, he drove me real far in New Jersey to buy an all white Viper and a blue liner. You know what I'm saying? After that, see, all my Viper was hard. I'm soft top. I'm saying, so after that, I drove him back to the dealership in New Jersey. After that, I went home. One day, Artie came in there. Uh, we had bought a, a what, I think a Z with this, the vet. You bought a vet, you had already had the, the, the Z. Uh -huh. And he was like, well, Nibs, can you, can you hold it for me? I was like, hey, you going to let me hold it? He's like, you can hold it. So I, I had it for like a, a week. And the whole week, I'm like, they like, is this yours, Mitch? I'm like, you know how I move, baby. <laughs> it's kind of funny, so. Yeah, you know, the license plate said what? I can't believe it. Didn't even say no. <laughs> but anyway, long story short, I wound up buying the car next, the, the week after that. You know, and I went into the dealership and bought me a Z right after that. You know, so, it was just, it was a change of, of like, just to have to be in his seat, just to see how like man, the energy that you get from people out here and women, it's, it's amazing. So he rung my bell Wednesday night or Thursday morning, like four o'clock. Who this? You know what I'm saying? Run, run him upstairs. Yeah, hey, why you ring my bell so late? You know what I'm saying? Now, how you doing? You know what I'm saying? I just want something. I just want something. He pulled out the 357. After that, he shot me in the head. The bullet came out. My right eye hit the wall. My whole body was numb. All I can do is fall. My whole body was numb. I stand in front of the money. 
nothing I can do before. I told him I love him. I told God I'm coming to see him. Because I thought he killed me. He took his hand, he took all the money, he took that, the key, he did out the house. I was shocked because I was able to move my body, but I couldn't stand up at all. You know what I'm saying? So I crawled out the kitchen after that. My girl woke up. She said, What happened? Oh, wow. You know I'm saying this, like, she was shocked. You know what I'm saying? So she went to get my neighbor. Now, when she went to get my neighbor, I lied there on my back and I asked her, oh, You want me to lie here, wait for the ambulance, or you want me to crawl downstairs? So the said, Crawl downstairs. I couldn't stand up, though. Open the door. I was about to take the staircase, but I took the elevator. I live on the second floor. I took the elevator to the first floor. Now my neighbor seen me. He came to my house. Yo, where are they at? He came downstairs. He seen me on the floor. He gave me a shirt to wipe my face off. After that, the first door, the ambulance at the next door. He put me on top of the stretcher. He took me to the hospital. Please drive fast, drive fast. Now, the gentleman that shot me, he was in the hospital. But he said something to me. I forgot what he said. After that, I was out. Because why I was out? Because the doctor gave me a bunch of needles. After that, I woke up the next day. My man came to the hospital. My man Will, he paid to the room by myself. I'm saying I had two beds, the shower in my room, I'm saying the TV. I'm saying and I was in the room the um the hospital for like three or four weeks. Yeah, three or four weeks. I woke up the next day and um and the doctor see me. Um he said, you know, like wow. I'm saying you gotta, you know, I gotta take out your eye. And I said, what? You gotta take out your eye, man. I'm saying the, the, the eye is damaged. I said, wow, you know what I'm saying? But I said to myself, you know what? You take it out, you know what I'm saying? Because hey, I was I was doing my thing, so you know, I can't see it. I mean I couldn't see out that eye at all. You know what I'm saying? But they took it out, you know what I'm saying, because the eye is like move, it's like it's, it's damaged. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, after they took my eye out, be now before they took my eye out. I never forget. I was in my girl mom's house watching TV and I was crying. I was crying. So my girl asked me, why are you crying? Because I got one eye. You know what I'm saying? And I and in order to I realized, I hope you'll listen to me. Because okay, the doctors can take out my, my right eye. I had money, I go downtown, the 39th street between 1st and 2nd Avenue, you know what I'm saying? And I bought a fake eye, you know what I'm saying? Now, my right eye is fake, you know what I'm saying? But I had money to go do that. But you know what? Now, I was crying. But, 2006, I went back to the gym, I got my weight back, and I was back hustling. And I ain't learned nothing. I, yo, I ain't learned nothing at all, man. Now, 2006, November 25th, was on a Saturday. And Trina, yeah, her, Trina's son had a party. He was three years old. And I was on 112th Street in Lenox Avenue on the downtown side, on the corner. And I was gonna take my daughter with me cause she was three years old. And listen to me, I love God. You know what I'm saying? Because everything happened for a reason. Because my little daughter was sick that day. And I told my baby mom, okay, take her home. I got in my car and when I got in my car, right, when you start up your car, you press gas, the door's like automatically. You know what I'm saying? But I got in my car, I started up my car, but I ain't press gas. My name is Harry O. I'm from Lenox Avenue and 113. 
Went to the rest, my cousin's restaurant called The Black Box. So everybody always come in and eat breakfast. Me, Artie, and another friend of mine, we bought all their turkey away. And we were waiting during the, all that time for the turkey way. So he went out and he went to get his car from watching it. So I went home and I came back. He came, he came through the block and he parked. I went in the restaurant and that's when I heard pow, 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 and that's it. Somebody opened my doors. They shot me right here in my traps. They shot me in my chest. They shot me in my ribs. And they shot me two more times in my head. And then when I came out of the room, I see his car. So I ran over. And we tried to get him out. But the car was locked. And he was unconscious right then. So we, we tried to break the glass, but it had but it was glass in it. So I pick a piece of, of the pole, the base of the pole, and I hit, I hit the glass with it. It bounced in the back, hitting my chest, and knocked me down. So we, 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 we smelled the car burning then. So the guy from Fine Fair came in with a fire extinguisher. Then we decided to cut the top. And then we couldn't find the lock. One of my friends named, named um, Clay, he went in and um, opened the door and we pulled him out. By the time we got, got him out, the paramedic was here and the police and they were telling back up, back up, back up. Same person that called me the first time, called me the second time. His wife Tasha V. And this time I was home upstate and I get the phone call and this time, it's just much worse than it was the first time. You know what I'm saying, B? I couldn't believe it. Where I was at, I, I hauled ass down there, man. Like, once again, eyes full of tears, B. Like, what the fuck? Are you serious again? And the funny thing about it is it's almost the same time of last year. You know what I'm saying? It was the same timing of last year. We shot in the eye last time. I'm the same around the same time, B. I was shopping on 2-5th and I got the call. Um, you know, A got shot bad, and um, he was supposedly had blew up in his car, from what I hear, you know what I mean? And um, I was bugging, like, yo, what? And I tried to, uh, once I got the Linux, I tried to make the right right there, it wouldn't let me. It was too many cops out there, they had it blocked off, like, you know, with those flares in the street. Somebody took my watch for 3000 somebody took my chain for 21000 you know what I'm saying? But I'm still here talking to y'all. The only person ran, it ran to him after we set him down, laying down, the jewelry was on his neck. Wasn't one of his girl. That's the only one been close to it. Before the ambulance came here, the cops passed me. The undercover cops, a different undercover cops, right? They see me, and they just keep walking, and, and they just keep driving by. And that's like, wow, I, I was shocked and saying, because somebody told me that. Only that day I seen a car keep looking at, come up by the, um, the black box, the restaurant, but nobody knew who the black car was. It's an old Ford um, Bronco with rims and everything on it, but it had tinted windows, you couldn't tell who it was. You know, he's burnt up, bad and stuff. And so my brother Tito called me and let me know, you know, he's in the hospital. And, you know, it, it was pretty bad for A. And it ain't looking too good. He just told me, yo, it ain't looking good for A, all right? You know what I'm saying? But the ambulance came to get me, you know what I'm saying? They took me to the hospital. Now, I was in a coma. After like a month in the hospital, he, he lost so much weight. It was so crazy, you know what I'm saying, man? And he kept having seizures and while he was in a coma. He, he was going through a lot. I was in a coma. And the doctors, almost every day, they kept telling my girl or my uncle to pull a plug. Pull a plug, pull a plug, pull a plug. 
So my girl called, I know she called Warren, and Warren said, don't pull a plug. But she called Tito and told Tito what the doctor told her. Tito left his job, came to the hospital, and told my girl and told my uncle, don't pull a plug. So one day I'm at work, I get the phone call, oh, come to the hospital, like, for what? You want to prepare us to pull the plug? I said, excuse me? That's your fucking mind? I said, nah, get the fuck out of here, dude. You know what I'm saying? You know what I mean? So I was like, damn, Tito. He said, yo, his, you know, they want to pull a plug. I said, yo, Tito, don't let them, don't, don't let them pull a plug on A, my nigga. Next year, I woke up, 2007. I couldn't talk. I couldn't walk. I weighed 100 pounds. You know what I'm saying? And I'm blind. But I realized every night, every night, I have a nightmare. Every night, man. Like Limp Biscuit, Woo. Fred Durst, Limp Biscuit, set your head first. Uh -huh. Got head first on the GB, was dead thirst. Uh -huh. I held work for Rail Mac, my next route. Kirk Love, CB, Dame Crew was the best out. Juan did the BMs, no number left out. We the M series, no top, chest out. A hunt tenth, the 55th. Paladino, the Riverside. Yes. Valentino for niggas eyes by the whole team kicks game day. What's the nigga size? I got y'all. See them lost who they ball for. Cab Childs had the BM parked in the ball store. They know. Don Divas, palm heaters was called for. White and PV, that's preacher. You better walk off. Uh, from Nordica to a rugby top. Breakfast at Pan Pan, dirty kitchen, the duggy spot. Yes. From rooftop to club body, the bottles pop. Soon as I left the back door, I heard Lottie shot. Damn. NFL, the same game. Peace, 40 walls, the names ring. I'm in the hood like bang bang with a